Welcome to Miss V, the Storyteller Podcast. Guys, I am so excited today. I have someone who is just like me. She is a storyteller, as well as so many other different hats that she wears. But you know, I love having storytellers on my show because they have a way of no matter what the subject is, they can tell it just as colorful <laughs> as I can tell stories. So I'm so excited to have her. Her name is Liz. Bloomfield, and she's going to tell us about herself. So Liz, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Miss V, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. And as you said, any time spent with a fellow storyteller is time well spent. So I'm a nonprofit leader, as well as a social impact and wellness coach. And I really care about creating a more just world in which everyone thrives. And I do that in a number of ways. I'm really focused on how we can really understand the stories we tell ourselves and each other about who we are and the impact that we're having in the world. And I do that in a few different ways. I'm the executive director of Ripple Effect Images, which is a nonprofit that uses visual storytelling. So film and photography, oh. as well as animation to shine a light on solutions, empowering women and children globally. We really believe that there's so much out there in the world that is working. And yet so many of the stories that we hear in the news, in our social media feeds or wherever we get our information, those stories are quite focused on, on what's wrong, the challenges, the difficulties, the victims, very negative stories. And yet we know from being out there in the world that there, that there are some extraordinary change makers many of them women who are getting it done. You know, yeah. they're seeing what they need in their community and they are implementing solutions that are transforming people's lives. And so we tell stories that reach wider audiences so that they can attract the resources to replicate their programs and have a ripple effect. And that's our story. And then I also really love to work with individuals so that they can realize their potential. Um, really understand what might be some of the stories that they're telling themselves that are no longer serving them and how can we work through that and in the course of my work again particularly with women really finding ways to empower them to be the change agent in their own lives so that's a bit about me I love it. I love it. And I, I love the type of storyteller you are because I feel so often when you say storytelling or storyteller, people immediately remember their kindergarten teacher standing in front of them with a book, reading a book, you know, telling a story. And I'm like, storytelling has so many different forms and so many different ways. So I love the fact that your form is different. Well, I shouldn't say different, but it's, it is a different way of telling stories. And I love it. My stories, when I share my stories, they're all personal stories, but they're all relative to things that happen in everyday lives. So I love it. I know you listen to the podcast and you've listened to some of my stories. So I'm wondering what story did you choose that resonated with you that, you know, we're going to talk about today? Well, there was no hesitation for me, Ms. V. I was very drawn to your story about mentors and your particular, your storytelling mentor. Um, it resonated with me because I've been privileged to have some fabulous mentors throughout my career and my life more broadly. But also the, the mentor as it relates to storytelling, because I think it it speaks to the point that you just made, which we, is we sometimes come with preconceived ideas about what storytelling yes. is, um, that it's writing a book, making a film, but actually stories are everywhere, everywhere, everywhere we look. And so working with, you know, finding mentors who can help you see that and can help you see how you can use your own unique gifts in that way. Again, mentors have such a powerful role to play. And I'm so grateful for the mentors that I've had. And I also feel immense privilege in being a mentor for people. Um, so that's why I was really drawn to that story. Yeah, so let me tell you guys about the story that she's referring to. Um, I did this story um, a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and it's um, the name of it is called Meeting My Storytelling Mentor. 
Um, if you haven't heard it, or if you haven't, you haven't, you don't remember it, I'm going to give you a little background. And you can go over to Spotify, Google, Apple, find the story, and listen to the entire story. But basically, it talks about how I found my storytelling mentor. And it, it was at the beginning of the pandemic when the world was shutting down. I decided to go to a conference. I wanted to know, I knew I wanted to be a storyteller, but I wanted to do some background. I wanted to know exactly what it was about. So I debated because that weekend was the weekend that the world literally shut down. And I debated if I was going to go. I went anyway. I'm so glad I went. Um, it was amazing. It was the best decision that I had made in my life at that time. I um, went, I changed my clothes. I went to the first night, which was a Friday night. And it was a night of just storytellers getting on stage and telling their stories. And I'm sitting there with my mouth hung open. I'm like, this is amazing. The next day is where we had um, other storytellers and we had sessions that we did. And that's where I met my storyteller mentor, her name is Sheila. Um, the lady that I met the night before, she kept telling me, she said, there is this lady that you need to meet. You need to meet this lady. That Saturday, she introduced us and we hit it off. The greatest thing about it was that she lived in the same state as me. And so we were able to connect. Yes, the world was shut down, but we did Zoom calls and she, oh my God, the, but let me go back a little bit because this is so relevant. The Saturday that I met her, she told me that I was going to tell a story that day in front of everyone. And I'm looking at her like, I just told you that I am new. I am trying to learn this craft and you're telling me that I have to do it. But I had faith in her from the moment I met her. If she felt like I could do it, I could do it. I got on up. I got up there. I told my story. It was received so awesome. Those people did not believe that was my first time telling in front of the group. So let's fast forward. We get back home after the conference and we start having our Zoom meetings and I would tell stories. She would give me feedback and back and forth. And then one time in a meeting, she said, uh, you're ready to speak. And there is this conference. It's in the UK and they're looking for storytellers and you would be perfect. And I'm like, me? and yet again I felt like she threw me under the bus again and she and it was from a storytellers from the UK from Africa I mean and I was immediately intimidated because in my mind Africans are the best storytellers they've been doing it for thousands of years that's how they relate it that's how they help their people so I'm gonna be on stage aka by zoom <laughs> telling stories and she was like you can do it you can do it and I did it but I have to admit the day that I had to do it I had to call her I had to text her I was like I am so nervous and she was like you can do it and I did it I absolutely love her she was the perfect mentor for me I've never forgotten her I am we go back and forth on social media you know so having a mentor to me is like the best thing you can do for whatever in your career, even in your personal life. So Liz, when you heard the story, what were your thoughts? Your story just really spoke to me because you found something that you were really interested in, you, it, you were curious about, but at that point, you didn't necessarily consider it to be an area of expertise, mm -hmm. but you took a big jump in to, to the unknown. And and I just, A, I just loved your bravery for just doing it because that so many people don't do that. There are things that they're curious about, but they're worried, you know, that maybe they're not, they need to master it before they step into the mm -hmm. space. But actually finding a mentor at that point of jumping into the unknown can be so valuable in helping you to persevere. And because you met wonderful Sheila on the very first night, she helped you have faith in yourself to continue, continue to pursue that um, journey, but also encouraged you to push yourself and to do more, more than you would do mm. perhaps if you just, if you'd just been there on your own and you'd just been observing. 
I think maybe you would have just watched the other storytellers. You are absolutely correct. Yeah. Because that was my, that's exactly what I went to do to observe. I never in my mind thought that I would be performing, but luckily I had a story that I had written and I had stories because I had, I was writing before then. So they were already in my head and she just <laughs> pushed me right. to get one of them <laughs> out. So yeah, you're right. I would have sat there. I would definitely, and not, I would have said one word. And that's the magic of mentors is, is how they, they help us be the very best version of ourselves. We're still going to be ourselves. We're still going to be bringing our own unique gifts and talents, but our mentors help us be even better and really I, shine. I agree wholeheartedly. And I think it's so important that you have the right mentor because you can have someone in your life and you start out thinking, mm, this is a great mentor, but then you realize, hmm. You know, but I think it's so important that you have the right one because I had her. She knew how much to push me. And when she felt like mm, she would bring it back and she was like, OK, let's do a couple of more things until you feel comfortable. Yeah. And then we did a couple more things and then I felt comfortable. And then she did that push. So I think it's very important. Do you have a mentor or are you a mentor or, you know, do you have a story about any of your mentors in your life? Oh, I have so many. Let me start with a <laughs> let me start with a couple. One of the most memorable mentors that I have was someone that I worked with maybe about um 10 years ago. And at that point, I I have a very unusual career pathway. I started in the military, I then worked um in public in the public sector and then was in the corporate sector. And at that point, I was working for um in the corporate sector and you know I just wasn't loving it and mm. I what I found a mentor um it was more of a mentor coach just somebody to help me understand why things just didn't feel quite like I wanted them to and she helped me get clear on what mattered to me what the difference that I wanted to make in the world was what my values were what I cared about and sometimes you really need someone to hold a mirror up to you however much you try to do that yourself a really good me mentor or coach can help you get that clarity and and what I realized from my relationship with her was that i I wanted to be in a different sector. I really wanted mm -hmm. to go back to more of a, the service values that I, I that are so deeply ingrained in me. And as a as a as a result of working with you know working with her with her being my mentor is I moved into the humanitarian sector. Oh, and okay. from there I worked on things that I was really deeply passionate about. Um, I was working on protection of civilians trapped in conflict situations. I was working on disaster response following earthquakes mm. and um, other natural disasters. She helped me see that I wanted to make a, a difference in the world and there were steps that I needed to take. So, I, so sadly, she recently passed and mm. it, brought back so many memories of me to for me of just how important a person she was for me at a really crucial point in my per, period in my life when I I knew I wanted to make a change but I wasn't sure what that looked like so I miss her deeply um and you know she was a brilliant example of how a mentor just helps you be clear on what you want for your life Another mentor that I have is the fabulous founder of the or the nonprofit that that I now lead. Annie Griffiths is a National Geographic photographer. She was one of the first female uh, photographers within National Geographic, and she, through the course of her career, really saw the potential in shining a light on what's working. And she went out and she did all kinds of coverages and told visual stories of mm -hmm. women, of female change makers. It inspired her to set up Ripple Effect Images that I now have the privilege to lead. And Annie is, is a great mentor to me. I, I value her perspective deeply because she, she also is a, a really committed storyteller. She's hugely talented, but she's also really committed to investing in other people and helping 
others, mm. particularly women, step up onto the stage, be the best version of themselves. Absolutely. And I really appreciate her her insights. But I also really value her her progressive thinking about how important it is that we amplify and elevate the voices of others. That telling stories isn't just about relaying um, something that we've seen, but actually passing the mic, opening up mm -hmm. the stage, giving other people the opportunity to tell their story because it matters who's telling the story. When you give someone the opportunity to tell their story, it empowers them. It, you see their body language change. They yes. sit up straighter. They realize that actually somebody is interested in, in what they have to say. And so I really appreciate um, Annie's commitment to providing that platform to amplify those voices. And then the third one I wanted to share is it's not someone that I have a direct mentor relationship with, but someone who inspires me hugely. And I'm going to transport you to rural Chad and tell you about <laughs> Hindu Umaru Ibrahim. She's mm. a nomadic woman who grew up in Chad and against the odds, her mother fought for her and her sister to get an education. And she went on to perform extremely well um, at, at school and at college. And she now combines her indigenous knowledge with 3D mapping to map water sources so that her community um, is able to access water in a place where water scarcity is, is a huge challenge. Hindu inspires me for so many reasons. She has gone on to speak on global stages and be a spokesperson for indigenous peoples up, across the world. And she's a real example of somebody who shows that you, you can do both. You can bring together technology and indigenous knowledge. You can stay true to your culture and your community while stepping onto a global stage so that you can reach wider audiences. She's truly a, a, a world changer. Uh, I And I'm so impressed by how she's remained very relatable. She's very committed to em amplifying mm. and elevating the voices of others. She's a mentor to me, even though she doesn't know it, um, <laughs> because I think she's an example of of what the world needs. We need people who have the humility to um, to offer solutions and bring people together in finding those solutions. And I just adore her. Oh my God. You know, I, I can see how much you love your mentors just like me. But one of the things you said that I I really love is that you didn't really know what you wanted, but when you found that person to help you find what you need, it is so amazing because I heard about storytelling. I kind of knew that I was, but having the right person to help me to walk that line and say, oh, I like this is what I'm supposed to do. And just like you said, you wanted to get back into serving to serve. That's why you were so uncomfortable because I had the same thing as you because I was working in a school before then. I was, you know, a bookkeeper and an office manager in a school and I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I mean, I did my job, but it was like, there's something missing. I know that there's more out there for me to do. And this is not it, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And going to the conference, meeting her, seeing her, seeing all the other storytellers, finding out that it's more to just standing up, telling a story. It's about reaching people and helping people to find themselves in the story, to connect with you. It was more to it. And I can see that with your, um, your first one, and I'm so sorry, you know, about the passing, but she left a legacy through you because you now have the gifts and everything that she had, she sold them and poured them into you. And I hope the same thing with me and my Sheila. Another thing you said was, you know, you can have more than one because I have a mentor that is, I don't know her personally, but I love Shonda Rhimes. 
She mm -hmm. is, she does Bridgerton. She does, I love her because she's such a strong representation of me. You know, she's African-American, but she was full figured at one time, but she made it in a world that she had so many odds against her, but she didn't let that bother her. She pushed past it and she was like, I'm a writer and you all are going to see how good I am. And mm -hmm. I love her. I mean, I follow her. her. She is such a great mentor towards me because she is what I aspire to be. It may not be at the same level, but at some level, you know, mm -hmm. I aspire to be that way. So I, I, I just love this. When you said um, about your, I believe it was your first mentor. No, it might have been your first or your third. So correct me on um, mm -hmm. which one it was when you were saying that you was missing something or it was just something they helped pull it out of you. That was the first one. Yeah. Were you still working in that or had you just like, okay, I'm going to stay here, but it's something about me. I don't know what it is because sometimes we do that. We'll stay in a position. We are, we are unfulfilled and we just stay there, but we don't seek out to find out, well, what is missing? Yeah. Yeah. I was still in the position at the time. And, and so I was just kind of, and I thought what I would, I thought what I was looking for, I would find where I was. <laughs> okay. And yet actually through the course of the conversations that we had, I realized that it wasn't to be found where I was and that I needed to make some bigger changes. And, and that's where I think having mentors is important because making big changes takes a lot of courage and it and often the people that we're closest to might have a stake in that and so the people you know our family our closest friends may have a vested interest in our decision and if we have the right mentors that have a sufficient level of detachment from the outcome they can help us really identify what we want for ourselves without them also being being kind of shaped by what they want for us and I think that's where it's a really there's a really in, interesting distinction to be made is that um sometimes the people that love us the most um serve us the least <laughs> <laughs> that's and, true <laughs> and I think that's not always the case but I think there are certain situations where finding people who share our passion um mm -hmm finding people who don't have an attachment to the outcome in the same way our loved ones would that's really powerful because they can offer us perspective and they and maybe that's being a cheerleader or maybe that's asking us empowering open questions about what we want for ourselves there's lots of forms that it can take but having mentors who who will help us uncover what we want for ourselves mm -hmm. it's it's such a gift it is such a gift and I you know I don't take any of my mentors for granted because they they helped me figure out for myself what I wanted and then they were the best cheerleaders in helping me get there and they helped me push myself beyond where I would have said okay I'm done now <laughs> um, and I think that's where where mentors are really powerful um and you know coming back to the storytelling again you know the the stories that we tell ourselves at different points mm -hmm. in the process are really powerful and they can be really limiting sometimes they can be empowering but sometimes we can be telling ourselves a story that we're just not good enough or we can be telling yes. ourselves a story that because something happened a certain way previously that's obviously how it's going to happen again or we can tell ourselves a story about that's based on a stereotype or a generalization mm. that we've taken to be true. And then we let that shape our decisions and you know the, the actions that we take. All of those things relate back to storytelling. And, and I think that's where it can be really powerful when you have a mentor that can that can challenge you on some of those limiting beliefs that could say, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> In your case, you know, you when you were had the opportunity to speak at that conference right at the very start, <laughs> you had a mentor that said, hey, you've got this, you've got this. And and I think that's where the the, the mentors can can really have a transformative impact. 
Listen, I, I love what you just said, and I'm so glad you you um, worded it that way. Uh, one of the things I love is that mentors oftentimes see things in, in you or in us that we don't see in ourselves and our family, they don't see it in us. You know, we don't even see it in ourselves, but sometimes it takes an outside person coming in, talking to you and seeing that thing that you just don't see. And something else you just said, and I have this, um, believe it or not, I have this post-it note that's right here that says, no conversations in your head, meaning no negative conversations. Because like you said, we tell ourselves third stories. You're not good enough because of this, that, or this thing. And then we believe that thing. Mm -hmm. And so I had to put this down because I was having a time where I was just having a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of negative stories in my head, like something would happen. I would create because I'm a storyteller, this whole story. And the story was based on what I thought, what I felt, not facts of what actually happened. Yeah. And so I, I, it's a constant reminder when I'm working, when I'm doing stuff, get out of your head, mm -hmm. go by your facts. Stop yep. putting, adding details to your story. That's mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's exactly what I have to do to myself. And then having someone, like you said, that can hold you accountable and question you on the way that you see things or you have conversations, like a mentor saying, well, wait, 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 but where did you get that from? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> let's talk about this, you know, because that's not what I see. Now, where did you get those thoughts from to challenge yeah. you and to help you to change your way of thinking, not necessarily tell you what to think, but helping you to change your way of thinking. So I love exactly. it. And I love the way you tied it together with storytelling and mentoring, which is amazing. So, you know, I, um, I ask questions at the end of my podcast. Um, I like to keep people thinking. So I think we did... Um, answer one but let's go over them anyway you'll answer the questions and I will it says do you have a mentor or are you a mentor and I know that you've had some but are you a mentor to anyone yes I mentor a number of different people in different um capacities I'm helping a, a number of women who are incredible <laughs> Uh, but don't necessarily realize how incredible they are. So I'm mentoring some some women there, and I just such a privilege to do that work because when you, when someone sees how amazing they are, the difference that they can make just accelerates. And so I feel hugely grateful for that. Yeah, I, I agree with you because, um, of course, we know that I've had mentors, but. Um, I found myself mentoring someone that I didn't know. Uh, we were always, we were running to each other at um, at a, a clothing store. And um, I started talking to her and asking her questions and everything. And the next thing you know, it's like, I'm seeing things in her that she didn't see in herself. And we started having conversations and everything. And then she said to me one day, she was like, you are just such a great mentor. And I didn't see myself as that. I saw myself as just helping her. But when she said it, I thought about Sheila, my mentor. And I'm like, that's the exact same thing she did for me. Although mm -hmm. I went meeting, but her and I, we knew each other, Um, the, the lady that I'm talking about. But I was like, oh my God. So I'm now, you know, mimicking what was done to me to someone else to help them to reach their fullest potential and it brought me so much joy especially when I see her and she's speaking and she's doing those things that she would not have done if she hadn't have met me or we hadn't mm -hmm. talked so I love it the next one is um question number two is it some is it someone you know in your personal or someone you look up to? Well, we kind of oh, we kind of answered that because the person you know is someone you do know. So we answered both of those questions already. Yeah. So, but thank you so much for being here, Liz. I'm telling you, I love this particular story that you um, selected because I want people out there to understand how important it is to have a mentor in your life, someone that can push you, someone that can see things in you that you don't see 
in yourself. So if someone wanted to find out about Liz, do you have anything going on? Please share with the audience what's going on with Liz. Yeah, so if you want to find out more about Ripple Effect Images, which is the nonprofit that I lead, and you know, re- and get some really empowering stories of women who are making a ripple, people who are just just implementing solutions that are transforming lives. If you want to check out some of those films and and photographs, you can go to rippleeffectimages.org. That's our website. And I also have a website, liz-bloomfield.com, which um, has some more information about the work that I do with people about their own storytelling and how they can kind of find ways to get out of their own way and be the very best version of themselves. So that's at, at liz-bloomfield.com and you'll find Ripple Effect and me on Instagram as well. Perfect. And I will make sure that I have all of that in the description so you can find her. But if you're out there and you're thinking about, if you're on a job and you're unhappy and you're like trying to figure out, you may need a mentor or you may need someone to just guide you. You know, as Liz and I both said, we've had mentors that helped us to become who we are. So go over to her website, go over and find information. And I think one of the things you should do is just go over there and look at the pictures. The images are amazing. You know, if you just want to be nosy, you just want to go. But I went and just like, oh, tell us real quickly about the picture that's behind you. She told me about it. So could you share real briefly about the picture that's behind you? Uh, this is a picture by our founder, Annie Griffiths. Um, it's a it's a young girl in Bangladesh. Um, and Annie, yeah, Annie took that beautiful picture of her with her mother. Isn't that beautiful? So go over and look at it. You know, if you want if one of those people just being nosy, go be nosy. You might find something, you might learn something, being nosy. But for those who are seeking out something different, go over to her um, web page or website or even on Instagram and follow her. So thank you again, Liz, for being here and for just being such a light, you know, wow. just for being such a beautiful light to us. Well, same to you, Miss V. I have huge respect for the work that you're doing and, and spreading the word about the power of storytelling. So thank you so much. You're welcome.